<sighs> vitality. Vitality, yes. So, vitality, um, vitality, there's nothing like vitality. Where's that from? Uh, cats. Like broadcasting on a different channel. When we're like this, and I can feel the field because mm -hmm. you're over there, yeah. right? Which, is, which makes it easier. But it's like when if you like come do that, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden what happens is I switch channels in, to the incorrect channel. So if I'm still staying on that one with the field, mm -hmm. then things things then I can stay present. And so I guess somehow I'm thinking about vitality as having being a strong enough signal so that I wouldn't, I wouldn't switch. Like the signal would be so strong that I wouldn't want to. Get, it would be. It would take more effort to get out of it than it would to stay in. Yeah. Something like that. We've got a couple of things going on too. Uh, physiologically, I think there's there's the nervous system, and you have the efferent and afferent neurons. Mm -hmm. So you're sending signals to the body, and if you do the, too much of that, you can't feel the signals coming in. So the arms have to be relaxed. Mm -hmm. So you have to have another way of moving the arms that doesn't involve sending signals to the arms. That's where the legs come in. That also helps to preserve the momentum. So that because your arms, because your your arms are not moving when the legs are moving. When the, so if I'm if I'm pivoting, if I'm transferring weight from one leg to the other, or I'm rotating around one hip or the other, I'm not moving my arms relative to the body. Right, the arms are staying. That's right. So when the, when, the, when the hips are moving, the arms are still. When the hips are still, then the arms can move. But this allows me to maintain that sensitivity so that the arms can be moved, so that I can connect to the ground, so that when I'm issuing power, I can feel that alignment and I can adapt it, mm -hmm. so that I can issue the power, so that the hands can express the power of the legs. Okay. If the arms are doing something by themselves, they're no longer expressing the power of the legs, they're expressing their own power. Right. They're fighting themselves. So there's that. So there's the neurons the, the, and, and the, nerve, so the nervous system. But the nervous system, to me, I think of the nervous system as being direct current. It's okay. DC. Okay. okay. And so it has its limitations. It'll meet interference and, and stuff. You know, I can do this and mess up the nervous system. Right. If I don't do that and I push, I'm connecting to the ground. But if I can do that, I can mess the nervous system right. up and it makes right. you lighter. Right. Uh, you're still very clever. Uh, <laughs> but the, the fascia is AC. Okay. It's an alternating current. So if, you t if the fascia is lined up, then it's not like the fascia then becomes a solid structure where you line it up and it gives you more power. But when you line up the fascia, what happens is that it connects and communicates with the rest of the fascia. So that if I push you here and the fascia is lined up, your feet feel it. Mm -hmm. So when I push, your legs respond, rather than your arms having to respond, rather than the nervous system having to tell the brain, to tell the body, to do this. Well, we saw that in the video, that fractile matrix. Yes. Where everything is like this, but as soon as you touch one part, it all like... That's right. Does it all the way down. That's right. Yeah. Unless, unless you, you physically restrain it. Right. And we do that too. There are different types of power in Tai Chi. One is that, that power of the legs, the power of that rotation. Mm -hmm. And then there's the power of restraining that fractal matrix so that you have this, this, this that kind of power from the core. And that, that comes out. And that forces the power to go out in a particular direction. Okay. And so that's another thing entirely, aside from all the stuff we've been talking mm -hmm. about so far. So yeah, if you think of the nervous system as being a direct current, and it can only go one way or the other, it has limits. It can only go so far, it can only go so fast. So the electron has to go from here all the way to there. Whereas with an alternating current, it goes like this. It can transmit over a much greater distance, mm -hmm. and it's much faster. So you turn this on, the lights are on there already. Right. <laughs> this is not a good explanation of how electricity works, but it's, <laughs> as an analogy, it kind of works here. So when you touch there, as soon as you touch, if my feet feel it, then that's the field you're talking about. Yeah. And if we're out here and you are attacking, then I can feel that because we have mirror neurons that are allowing me to, f to feel what's going on out there. So I can respond to what you're doing because I can feel what you're doing, because I understand what you're doing. So then offense and defense become the same thing. Uh, giving and receiving become the same thing. So here, you're still getting to that point sometimes where 
I issue power and you're not responding with your feet. So your hips are tight, you're kind of braced, you have that double weightedness in the legs. Whereas if you relax the hips, just wiggle them around, get them loose, and bend your hips, go up and down, make sure the hips can, so the hips should feel like they can get pushed in any direction as well. Okay. That way your weight goes into the thighs, now you have this connection so that when I go like that, there you go. My arms were getting, getting pretty good at doing this, yep. so I was, I was kind of counting on them too much. Right, yeah, you have to go back and you have to, engage the legs in order to recruit the earth. You can't just be braced on top of them. And, and people do that a lot in Tai Chi, and in a lot of martial arts too, where you're working on such a, a precise, specific skill that you lose the whole thing. A wheel is not an automobile. Tai Chi may have the best wheels, <laughs> no chassis, no steering wheel, nothing. Yeah, it just has this, that one element that would go really great if we had a car to go with it. Uh, people will train like this, they'll do push hands and they won't, have, they won't use the legs. And I do this when I'm teaching, where I'll let my arms do the whole thing and I'm, I'm not even trying. Right. Yeah, sometimes I'm very trying, sometimes I'm not trying at all. But if I can engage. Okay, that's, that's, that's better already. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you, you feel your hips move, yeah. and wiggle them around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do a little circle with the tailbone every once in a while just to make sure that all those joints are working. Uh -huh. And then now when I move, I move your feet. Don't do this, this weird little collapsing bung so thing. Uh -huh. So you, there you go, yeah. keep that, that flow. So this way you're always into my center and I cannot find yours. Mm -hmm. And it's not because you're deflecting me, it's because you have superior structure and I cannot engage accept your centripetal engagement. I can only engage the earth. So it's not about moving the arm side to side, it's about feeling the right point. That's, that's right. the point of contact that you're engaging. That's because the knee. I can feel that. There, yeah. I can feel that. So that's, 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 those are the legs. Yeah, now there you kind of brace, yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. But now don't move so much okay. when you fix it, right? Okay. You get there, so brace out again. Okay, now just find that point. There you go. Right. That's all, it's, a, it's about where your mind goes, not about what the arm is doing.